Hello, welcome to the Weekly Wind-Up with myself, Emma Kirk. Today I'm joined by Ruth and Kate from Caritas Care and Adoption Matters. They're here to talk about a concurrent care service that combined charities have undertaken to give an alternative path to parents wanting to adopt. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hi, thank Hi. you. Can you tell me a little bit about the service that that you're actually providing? Yes, of course. So um, we set up in the northwest about three or four years ago, yeah. um, and we're really established there. And it's a special, it's a different route for adoption. So we recruit and um, train adopters um, with a slightly route, so they um, are also approved as foster carers. Okay. And the idea is that when children first come into care, if it's likely that they are likely to go home to birth family, they will be fostered by our adopters and then if the plan is for them to be adopted they will stay with our carers and be adopted through them. So the great thing for the children is that they have a lot less moves than they would yes. have done through the normal process. A little bit more stability. Yeah. Okay. So when you say it's a different route for adopters, yeah. how does it differ? So it differs because they're also approved as foster carers. Okay. I mean, the first start they are fostering the children Mm -hmm. um, and they will take the children to contact and meet the birth parents, so very well supported. Right. Um, and then through that whole fostering process, um, which is very different. So normally, standard adopters, the children have already gone through the court process. Yeah. And they, so it means that they're older, they've gone through different challenges in their life, they will yeah. have had different moves. Um, so it's a very different process um, and lots of positives. So I suppose that also gives the adopter chance to get to know the child. Yes. Do you ever find that that means that they decide they don't want to do it? No. So um, <laughs> so in, in the north, so we've oh, we've placed 87 children um, and our doctors really want to care for those children long term if that is at all possible. Um, right. They have a very special bond with those children, they mm. are very nurturing, they've gone through the most traumatic times with those children being removed from the birth family, yeah. there's no other more traumatic time. Um, yeah. So our carers have a real special bond with our, those children that they care for, so they're very committed to those children. Mm. So it's definitely not happened yet. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I wanted to adopt a child, how do I go about that, going through your process? Um, so anybody looking to adopt, there's different options they, they have available to them and there's, they advise anyone to do some research and look online, get in contact with different agencies, decide which one suits them best. But if somebody decided they wanted to adopt through the concurrent planning route, um, then the first step is to get in touch with us and come to one of our information evenings where we spend some time talking about um, the process and what it involves to be a, a concurrent planning carer because it is different to the traditional route to adoption. Yeah. So anybody wanting to find out any more can look on our website for our upcoming dates and get in touch and come and talk to us there and ask some more questions and learn a bit more about it. So do you have people who at that evening who have been through the process as well as ex experts? Um, at that evening it would be two of us from the team that would be there to be able to talk about it but we have videos from our carers who've been right. through the process. We have three of those that we show at our information evening which I think are really valuable. For yes, to see. yeah, yeah. I would want to see I think how yeah. it, how somebody had felt while they were going through the process. Yeah, uh, and the other part that we do is if people have got, say for example, might have birth children in the family want to know how they'll cope, we can link up with people that have already done it. Um, so they can have those conversations because we can we can say whatever but actually doing it yourselves is completely different so yeah. we'll link up people to get those stories and on our website we've got carers stories who've done it um, and sort of their experiences as well okay okay so I mean obviously from uh, we were talking a little bit before about how if you've gone through an adoption process and you've been turned down that's more traumatic and on top of the fact that you can't have children perhaps mm. You know, do you have a support system for people in that situation? They've been turned down for adoption? Yeah, from somewhere else. Oh, right, yeah. So we would encourage anyone to come and talk to us. Um, and there's certain things. There's a very thorough assessment process, and we need to look and make sure that our carers have got the skills and abilities and strengths to be able to do that because it's a challenge, and we need to make sure that they're safe and able to care for those children. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're, if they're, if they want to come to us and speak to about their individual circumstances, we can talk to them and we can support them through that. What kind of people do you have adopting through your system? Um, I think there's a whole range of people. Um, we have people come forward who are in relationships, who are married, we have single carers, we have um, same-sex couples. It's a whole range of people. Some people are in their 20s, some are in their 40s, from a whole range of backgrounds. Um, we have some people who have maybe tried to have a family naturally and haven't been able to. 
we have other people who've chosen to start a family through adoption um, mm -hmm. and we have people who already have their own birth children and people who don't so it's really a whole range of people and that's mm -hmm. what we want we we have a whole range of children who need homes so we need a whole different um, range of people who want to adopt and how are you supported as the two charities yeah so in terms of supporting our carers we have a huge amount of support so because it's um, quite a niche market yeah. um, the support is absolutely crucial for our carers so we have monthly support groups at our care it's really well attended and what we found is actually the support the carers tend to support each other as well it's a real mm. close network um, they have. it's a very unique situation it is, isn't yeah. it? and it's not yeah. quite fostering and it's not quite adoption yeah. and it's yeah. got different challenges and um, it could be hard for their family and friends to quite understand they know they want to start a family and now they're fostering a child rather than just adopting a child and it's quite hard for them sometimes to explain to their family and friends or for them to really understand what they're going through but yeah. other people who are in the process they're ideal for, to be able to empathize with them and get support yeah through. yeah and I know you said that you you train people yeah how how do you train somebody to be able to adopt I think it's about training somebody to understand the needs of that child they're going to be caring for because our service is for um, not to three or not to four year olds it's younger children so but they're going to grow up knowing that they're an adopted child and there'll yeah. be difficulties along that way. That child's experienced trauma just by the not being able to live with their birth family for whatever reason. So mm -hmm. we help our adopters to understand um, how to care for their children in a therapeutic way um, and how to help them with issues of identity or wanting to find their birth family later in life so they're ready okay. for those challenges when they arise. So you're there with them throughout the throughout the whole process, yeah. so right till sort of 18, 20 or? Yeah, so they have uh, more intensive support early on through the adoption, the fostering and the adoption phase, um, and then we offer support ongoing as and when they need it. And some people might need support at different parts of their life. So the lovely thing about both our agencies is we also have um, another joint partnership which is called Centre for Adoption Support so that offers therapy, that offers okay. training um, and lots and lots of different things so our carers have got access to that mm -hmm. and all that training that that brings and that is throughout their adoptive journey so it might be that actually they don't have any involvement with us for five or six years and yeah. then they need to start um, their child is, is hitting puberty and, and questioning their identity and they need some support, it yeah, might mean yeah. they need support with education they might need therapeutic support so that is an ongoing thing and I think that's something that's really important for for adopters know mm. that they've got that ongoing support throughout yeah. throughout the life yeah, and yeah, the adoptive absolutely. journey. How does your how do you get funding? Um, so our agencies are both charities but the majority of the funding comes through the concurrent planning service comes from local authorities um, okay. making a placement of a, one of their children with our carers there's a fee that's associated with that okay okay so if I wanted to get in touch to, to help you guys out mm -hmm. how do I go about that is it exactly the same for Facebook or Twitter or yeah so we <laughs> have Twitter we have Facebook we've got a concurrent planning website which has got lots of stories um, and also there's adoption matters and characters care have also got their own websites as well so mm -hmm. I think on the um, I think there's a 0300 number so if anyone's interested just give us a call yeah. uh, and we can talk you through it and if you've got any questions or want to find out um, just give us a ring we're really friendly and uh, <laughs> we'll just you know we'll just talk you through because it's it's a massive decision people mm. making that thought about moving on to adoption mm. um, and starting a family um, and we you know we're really well trained and have got a lot of experience about supporting our carers with that. How did you two start working you know in, in this sort of area? Um, well, I've been working as a social worker for about five years and I started um, with the Concurrent Planning Service about four months ago when they started in the Yorkshire and Humber region. But before that, I've been a social worker with children um, who are looked after. So okay. I'd been involved with children when they're first removed from their families, yeah. assess doing assessments and making decisions for the court, recommendations for the court about the long-term plans for those children. Mm -hmm. And I just strongly believed in the, the route that this service does. Yeah. Um, minimising the moves for children and allowing yeah. them that if they are likely to be adopted allowing them to form those relationships as early as possible yeah. so they don't have to experience any more loss um, or changes in their carers so that's something that I really passionately believed in so I'm really happy to be working for the service. It does seem to make a lot of sense mm. the system yeah. yeah and how about yourself? Me so I originally worked with homeless women and children and then I moved um, to be a social worker in the fostering team at Carter's Care so I did that for about 12-13 years um, and then we were setting up the Concord Planning Service and we quite early on realised that the first part is quite heavily fostering and for me 
working really closely with foster children and seeing all the different moves and different social workers coming in and it's, it has a massive impact on children. Mm. What I love about this is actually children at the centre of the planning, they don't have loads of moves, they have mm. amazing quality care mm. and actually they get their permanent placement really early on, it really minimises delay. So sometimes when I was in the, the fostering team, some of our young people, there would be like three, four years involved in their court proceedings and yeah. it's just uncertainty for a really long time yeah. and the, there's been a lot of changes and the time scales have really reduced but actually for me that was the thing that was really important mm. about concord planning and I think for the children they, they have a great opportunity. Mm. Mm. Minimising that long term Minima effect. Yeah, mi minimising long term effect as much as possible yeah. and just reducing the amount of moves that children have in the care system mm. has got to be better. Um, so yeah. Well, it sounds like an, a brilliant solution, and I hope that Yorkshire sees as many people as you've yeah. already had. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to recommend quite a few of my friends yeah. <laughs> to yeah. come and see you. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much for coming and talking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. If you want to talk about this or any other topic, our contact details are on the screen. I'm Emma Kirk. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.